Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. And today we'll be playing through G.I. Joe, a real American hero for the NES. Uh, this is a game I never really played growing up. I have dabbled with a couple levels here and there through flashcards and emulation over the years, but never really sunk significant time into it. I always meant to, and I just never did. Uh, thanks to some people requesting uh, me do this game a few months back, uh, I decided to fire it up, and uh, I've now since finished it a handful of times. Uh, it was kind of a pain to learn, but I've got some strategies that allow me to get through the game fairly smoothly, fairly consistently, and what we're going to be doing is going through this entire game from start to finish, and I'm going to be talking about my strategies and just strategies to play by as you as you, you pick up and play and maybe learn this game. Um, if you're already experienced with this game, uh, let me know about your own strategies in the comment section down below. Let me know your preferred characters and things like that, uh, preferred routes to go, and so on and so forth. Because uh, there's, uh, you know, the thing about G.I. Joe is that you do have three characters you can play as uh, at any given moment out of a pool of uh, even more characters. And so, you know, characters do have different stats. You know, they can punch harder, they can shoot harder, Harder, they can jump higher or lower things like that. They might have less health overall uh, So you do have some flexibility with this game on how you tackle it and tackling the game with certain characters uh, Will be a lot easier than tackling the game with other characters So yeah, there is a little bit of uh, flexibility and variety in this game. Thanks to that and so uh, Some of you guys out here uh, might have totally different strategies So but with that let's go ahead and hit the start button We're gonna skip through all the story stuff and stuff like that uh, there is actually quite a bit of it, but yeah, uh, when you start a mission, it allows you to pick uh, a handful of members. Your first member, uh, the leader, is always picked for you. So in this first mission, uh, it is Duke. And so what I'm going to do, though, is pick Rock and Roll, and I am going to pick uh, Snake Eyes. Um, this is going to be my team for a lot of the playthrough, with the leader being obviously, you know, forcefully chosen for me. But Rock and Roll is the most powerful character in the game in terms of firepower. Um, so we're going to be trying to upgrade his guns relatively quickly. So with G.I. Joe, you can punch by default. Uh, pressing select allows you to whip out your guns. And you can see with Duke here, he's got a two-way shot to start. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade Duke's guns uh, in the beginning here. It takes four weapon upgrades to uh, to upgrade your weapon to the next level. Uh, these little fish here, they always just jump straight up uh, right in front of you. So if you try to jump over them, they'll actually jump right into you. So just you just kind of want to wait like this. Wait for them to jump up like that, and then that's it. Uh, enemies do constantly respawn, so if we go back and forth, you'll notice that this guy will just constantly come right back in. It is possible to grind out on enemies for a weapon and ammo drops and health pickups and things like that. The reason I'm waiting here is I wanted to pick Snake Eyes, because he's the only one that can actually grab this. He's got a super high jump, and let's go ahead and switch back over to Duke, because uh, we want to make sure that his, his gun gets upgraded. He's currently at level 1C. Uh, when we upgrade his gun from level 1D, uh, it'll go to level 2A, and it'll actually be visibly uh, larger and more powerful. Uh, gotta go ahead and just jump over these boars, nothing too special there, or you can just punch them. Don't really need that health. And we're gonna jump behind the trees as well, because uh, there are lots of powers behind the trees. And sometimes you can uh, duck under these guys' projectiles, just like so. Switch back over to our fist. Actually, back over to our gun. Boar snuck up on us from behind. And still getting upgrades from behind those trees. I actually should be switching off to rock and roll to upgrade his gun. There's actually a uh, health increase. I wanted to get that health pickup. There's actually a health increase right up here hiding behind the tree. So we can grab that. You'll notice that Duke's health bar just extended. And again, keep jumping behind these trees. We're actually close to the end of this first level here, and we're going to get to our first boss fight. So, you notice that power-ups actually come in two varieties. They come in solid types or blinking types. Uh, the solid types will give you a little bit of whatever they do, and the blinking types give you significantly more. With the health, the little K icon there giving you all of your health back. So this boss is actually two-phased. Uh, for the first phase, it just stays to the left-hand side of the screen, and all we really want to do is just shoot it, like so. And it's second phase, it breaks apart, and then it dashes across the screen. And so for this part, you want a character that can jump high. And there are a couple of points in the game where you really, really need a character that can jump high. If you don't have a character that can jump high, you're actually not going to be able to jump over them. And that's going to be a problem. You're going to take lots of damage. Uh, later on in the game, you'll have bosses that have endless pits in them. And you'll just die because you, you know, got knocked into an endless pit. 
what I'm gonna do is actually come down here, switch over to, um, switch over to Rock and Roll, try to get his guns upgraded a little bit. There's gonna be, uh, another gun down here. So these are detonator missions. Uh, the goal here is to lay down a variety of detonators. Uh, on this first one, you only have to lay down two detonators. Uh, the next one, we have to lay down three. Then the one after that, it's five, then six, and then I think it jumps to eight. Uh, so at the end of the game, there's a huge detonator mission leading up to the final boss, and it's super tedious. Uh, one of my least favorite aspects of this game. I have quite a few least favorite aspects of this game, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to try to stay relatively positive here. Uh, this game is a bit of a chore to learn, let me just say that. So we're going to go ahead and switch back over to Duke. Actually, no, let's switch back over to Rock and Roll, because one more gun upgrade will upgrade him. Let's go ahead and just punch these guys, conserve our ammo. Uh, ammo is limited unless you're playing as Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes has unlimited ammo, but it's a very, very weak projectile. And one reason I wanted to pick Snake Eyes is for this level right here. So let's go ahead and grab this gun upgrade. We also got ourselves a jacket or armor, which uh, basically allows us to remain invincible for a short period of time. So with Snake Eyes, I can actually jump up here. I can't jump up here with any other character, but I have to jump up and shoot. Otherwise, I just keep bumping my head and I just fall right back down. And uh, Rock and Roll has been upgraded once, so what I'm going to do is actually upgrade Snake Eyes. So this is 2C, and this will take me to 2D, just like that. And we're going to switch back to Rock and Roll, because uh, there's actually a health upgrade right here. These little badges permanently extend your health bar, just like so. And we're going to go ahead and just punch him, just like that. And we're gonna hit the check mark. So that's our second detonator. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this ammo and health with rock and roll simply because uh, he was the only one that was missing health. So for this boss right here, you just gotta watch out for this guy's birds. He basically throws the bird down twice and then he'll dive off the screen and then dive wherever you are on the play field, just like so. So he's gonna throw his bird down. That's interesting, he actually threw it straight at me, which is actually kind of rare, he doesn't usually do that. Usually his bird will come out and do s sort of like small swooping, looping patterns. Um, but that was weird, he actually just, you know, it dive bombed right towards me. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade Duke here. So he's at 2D, gotta go ahead and just use our projectiles here as well. Actually no, I'm gonna switch over to my gun. Uh, don't really need that health. Something I wanted to note on this uh, first mission is that the the blinking water down below, um, the blinking water down below actually has platforms uh, within it. So they're not endless pits on this level, but on subsequent stages, uh, every pit pretty much is an endless pit. So this level kind of eases you in, or this mission eases you in, when it comes to uh, endless pits. And I always take a hit on that part. It's tough to, to get past that without taking a hit. I'm gonna go ahead and just kill this guy. Got a little bit of health. And this is our main boss. I'm gonna actually switch over to uh, Duke because he's got um, quite upgraded firepower. And this guy just bounces around the arena, completely random. Uh, so there's really no rhythm or rhyme to this guy. Get in his face, tank him, maybe move out of the way to dodge his uh, explosives. But as far as his moving back and forth, totally random. I've had it to where he's just set in place for pretty much the entire fight. I've had other fights like that where he just bounces back and forth like an idiot. Uh, and you can't really do anything about it. It's a little frustrating. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is also use Snake Eyes. Uh, because his projectiles uh, have unlimited ammo. And so I can use that to conserve ammo. And then I can use Rock and Roll on the boss fight. And then uh, just pummel the boss fight with Rock and Roll. Because he's got very, very strong firepower. And speaking of which, we're going to actually switch over to Snake Eyes. We've got his melee attack right here. Uh, which will kill these guys in one hit. Um, switch back over to our projectiles. With these endless pits right here, uh, you really want to switch to your firepower. You don't want to be using... Uh, your fists uh, because you're you're pretty much going to take damage So switch over to rock and roll to get our upgrades here I should actually kind of switch over to blizzard because he doesn't have any upgrades But I'm really just using blizzard as a backup right now. I mean he's you know, we're given him forcefully We have no choice um, We have no choice with blizzard, but as long as rock and roll stays alive and his weapons are good uh, We should be fine for the boss fight so we'll switch it back over to Snake Eyes, kind of like so. 
And you got to really watch out here because these guys will shoot at you and there is some nasty knockback in this game. So if I had gotten hit there, I absolutely would have um, most certainly been knocked into the pit. You have no air control in this um, when uh, you get knocked back, unfortunately. And these guys will jump down after you destroy them, so it's best to hit some of these guys with a, a you know, a character that's actually strong. Snake Eyes, you know, yeah, uh, doesn't use any ammo on uh, his, his gun. Oh, it's not really a gun, but his projectile. But it's really, really weak, so... It's definitely a little bit better later on in the playthrough once it's once it's upgraded, and you guys will see that once uh, once that happens. And uh, so this is another mechanic I haven't explained. If you switch to your melee attack, uh, your sword or your punch or whatever, if you press up and attack, you'll actually toss out grenades. And what's great about the grenades is that they actually do pretty decent damage. And um, they do decent damage, and they're unlimited. It's like Snake Eyes' uh, projectile, except it works for every character. So just press up and attack, and this is an ideal boss to use grenades on. Just like so. And on to our next detonator mission. And so another gimmick's actually introduced here, or gameplay mechanic. Uh, it's vehicles that you can actually take control of. So our first one is a heli, and you just hold A to go up, and then uh, you just let go of A if you want to fall down. And so this is our first detonator up here. And there are only three in this level. So the detonator missions, I don't really mind in the early parts of the playthrough. Uh, for one, they don't take that long to go through. And two, the level design is a little more distinct than the later detonator missions. Uh, the later detonator missions start to look, all the areas start to look identical. And not only do the areas look identical, which means you're getting lost easier, uh, they're also... Uh, they also require you to drop even more detonators, uh, all the way up to eight on the final mission. It's extremely tedious. Uh, so let's actually come on up here. Uh, well, actually, I already did that. I'm getting sidetracked here. So we can actually come on through here to get another detonator or lay down another detonator, just like so. So we've got two with 444 seconds on the clock. You do typically get a lot of time with uh, these detonator missions. And uh, our heli is about to be destroyed. And I'm going to go ahead and just upgrade Snake Eyes here. And we're going to go ahead and just come on down here. There is another heli down in the bottom. And I'm going to actually switch over to Rock and Roll to extend his health bar. And I think Rock and Roll's health bar is actually permanently extended right now. It doesn't go any higher than this. And speaking of which, let's uh, give the weapon upgrade. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, give it to Rock and Roll. And we'll switch back over to Snake Eyes to conserve our ammunition. And we can actually just fall through here like so. And there is our last detonator. So if I come on over here and jump all the way up and then exit, if I fall down, I can get myself another heli. And we can just use that to get back to the boss without taking any uh, damage. So, um... We're gonna actually switch back over to Rock and Roll and use him for the boss fight. So I like to save Rock and Roll for the bosses because his firepower is extremely powerful if you point blank. Point blanking is where you have all of your projectiles uh, collide with the enemy. And the way to do that is to get close to the enemy. Just like so. Well, not like so right there. I wasn't point blanking. I was really far away actually. But getting right up in an enemy's face with a spread shot and then firing and having all the bullets colliding, that's point blanking. Alright, so, little tricky section here. Uh, what I did want to mention, though, is that when you're using a vehicle in this game, um, you know, when the vehicle takes damage, you don't take damage personally. Only the vehicle takes damage. And so that's why I wanted to grab that heli at the end of that other level, is because I wouldn't take damage, the, the heli would take damage for me. So, it absorbs a few hits, and we're going to go ahead and just grab these power-ups. This, uh, this vehicle right here is really awkward to control. Uh, you just kind of... Don't hold anything, and then just rotate the D-pad around. And you can also hold down A to jump up really high. And we're going to actually switch characters here so I can get this uh, this pickup. Uh, we'll do it with Snake Eyes. That extends my health bar, that badge. And one thing you have to keep in mind on this section is when you uh, get... You know, when this thing gets destroyed, you fall directly down. And let's switch over to Rock and Roll. 
I really need Rock and Roll's health bar to get extended, though, so this is actually kind of problematic. But we're gonna stick with Rock and Roll here because uh, his gun is really powerful, and I want to take care of these guys without getting knocked back. These are really big endless pits right here. And for this boss, I'm gonna just try to tank him right away. We're gonna try to jump over first with Snake Eyes, and then I'm gonna try to get up in his face with Rock and Roll, and then just pummel him point blank like I was talking about before. And let's switch over to Snake Eyes. We're just gonna go ahead and use Snake Eyes for the rest of this fight. Just like that. I did not want Rock and Roll to die, because he probably would have gotten downgraded, uh, and I would have had to restart the fight with much, much weaker weapons, and there's a good chance that I would not have been able to beat the fight. That's how this fight is. It's my least favorite fight in the game. It's extremely difficult to follow the guy's pattern, because the arena is so cluttered, um, and it's just use Rock and Roll, uh, point blank him, uh, with uh, with upgraded weapons, and then you should be good to go. So we're gonna select rock and roll again, and we're gonna actually uh, do we're gonna do Captain Gridiron because Captain Gridiron's gonna be forced upon us on the next mission. And we're gonna use Snake Eyes to start here though, and just attack these guys like so with his sword. Pretty simple level here, nothing too crazy. Just got ourselves an ammo drop. So the other great thing about just using the melee attacks in this game is, uh, you know, uh, enemies will drop upgrades and, and, you know, ammo and things like that. And health. And by doing this without actually using our guns, we're slowly building up our ammunition. Now, unfortunately, just non-glowing bullets only give you five. And I think I've actually maxed out... No, Snake Eyes is on 3D right now. The other thing I can do is use Snake Eyes' uh, projectiles to also conserve ammo, because again, they don't use ammo. But I'm going to use the sword. The sword is more powerful. But that grenade strategy I used on a previous boss, we're going to use it again on this upcoming boss. So, fairly easy boss to deal with with the grenades. And we got 190 bullets, which is good. Much more than we started with. So we're just gonna sit here and just use our grenades. If the boss stops on top of you, just move to the left or right, get out of the way of the missiles. Just like so. And again. You can actually mash the fire button really quickly here to do it faster, which is very nice. All right, just skip through all that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna fall down here, and this is where our first detonator is. Now, there's a vehicle up top that I'd like to get, but I don't wanna get it in the beginning because there's a quirk with certain vehicles. Uh, the one that runs in the wall is, uh, it can't actually destroy walls like this. And so we've got some upgrades right here. This is a health upgrade. And let's see, can I come down here? There's this bullet down there that I always struggle to get, and uh, I don't know how to actually get it. Maybe it's up here. I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, we can just walk through here. There it is. So that actually gave us 30 bullets, which is great. And jump up really high. Snake Eyes has a super, super tall, long jump, which is great. And we can also actually come back in here. And now Snake Eyes is maxed out. You notice that he's got a five-way projectile, which is great. Much more powerful than the other ones, so it's much more viable. If we come on up here... Which, with Snake Eyes, is easier said than done. We can actually get into this vehicle. And what we're gonna do is come on over this way. Uh, if it lets me. Let's see if we can come on up here. There we go. Uh, for some more upgrades. So, we're gonna switch over to uh, Gridiron. So he can get his weapons upgraded. We're just gonna fall down here, just like so. And we're gonna go ahead and come on... Uh, let's come on this way first, for another weapon upgrade. And we're gonna come this way. Ooh, that was that's actually a good pickup, but I wasn't able to get it, unfortunately. It was gonna go off the screen, I wouldn't have caught up with it. We're gonna come all the way down here for another detonator. 496 seconds on the clock. And we can sort of skip some of these guys if we're lucky. 
going to take my time here, because I don't want to take unnecessary damage. And, uh, I think I'm going to have to actually get out of this thing, so let's go ahead and exit it. Switch back over to Snake Eyes so we can conserve ammo. And I think that's a gun pickup. Yep. And I think these are accessed from above. I don't think they're accessed from down here. Yep, just like so. And we'll get Gridiron's health up as well. So we got his uh, first weapon upgrade. And I think that's it, but let me comb this area just to be safe. Yeah, that's it. Again, just use Snake Eyes to take care of these guys. You can snipe these guys from a distance if you use the uh, platforms appropriately. And there we go. Gonna just take our time here. Another thing you can do if you're really unsure about this is you can, you know, you can, you've got mid-air control in your jumps. And so you can, you can utilize that to take out some of these turrets. So we're gonna come on this way. And come down here. See, kind of like this. Just like so. Snipe this guy. Take advantage of those nasty large hitboxes. Beneficial for you if you're attacking enemies. Um, terrible for you if enemies are attacking you. Let's come on down here. Health refill. And there's going to be another detonator over here. More upgrades. Again, switch back over to Gridiron. We want to get him upgraded. Because he's the weakest of our party right now. But his firepower is really good, actually. Uh, it's my favorite firepower next to Rock and Roll. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get that, uh, that vehicle that's up there. We get it from uh, another side. So switch back over to Snake Eyes. And we can go ahead and come on up this way. Now something that just happened, you notice that I actually grabbed onto the, uh, the wall. And uh, this is a, a gimmick that is introduced on this level. Or I keep saying gimmick like it's a negative thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mechanic that appears on this, uh, on this level. And it's actually very important for the upcoming boss. Which I'll talk about once we're at it. For these guys, I just want to wait and then jump over them. And I'm actually going the wrong way here. I actually have to go back around. So, but we did get a slight upgrade there. Or a health refill. I don't have these detonator missions fully memorized because it's just... They get longer and longer and longer as the game goes on. Uh, this, the last two detonator missions are the ones I really struggle with in terms of, you know, having them... My, my familiarity with them. The last one in particular is just a nightmare. It's, it's a literal maze. Everything looks the same. Uh, and you're just being bombarded by projectiles. At all times, it is not fun. I, it's one of my least favorite levels I think I've ever played in an NES game. Uh, it's, it's that bad. Let's go ahead and uh, can grab our vehicle here. We're going to come through here. And we can actually pick up Gridiron again. Not that, we, not that we really need to. But we can actually, with that armor, just cut right through these enemies, which is great. Speeds things up and makes these levels a little more tolerable. This level still isn't too bad, but you can see how things start to look very samey. Very, very samey. The previous two detonator missions actually weren't that bad. Um, the level design was a lot more distinct. And if you're going to make a maze level in a game, you got to make areas look distinct. Otherwise, you know, you got to bring out the pen and paper. And that's just, no one wants to do that uh, in this day and age. So, but yeah, this is our last detonator right here. And uh, then we can switch off. I'm going to actually switch back off the snake eyes because I know I'm going to lose my vehicle. Boom, just like that. I probably should have played a little bit smarter there and just dodged the enemy, but it's not a big deal. Alright. Gonna go ahead and just uh, do it that way. Watch out for these projectiles. Just gonna wait for him to throw another one. And there we go. Oh, I always forget it loops back around. He normally catches it, but since he wasn't there to catch it, uh, he couldn't. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, switch over to... Nah, we're gonna actually just do Snake Eyes on this one. So this is an interesting one. When you hit this guy's weak spot, which is the, sort of like the pod in the middle, uh, it'll actually shoot projectiles back out, out at you. But this is what you want to do to avoid his, uh, his pattern there. You cannot avoid that if you stay up above. You want to wait for his arm to come out. And then uh, what I like to do is just kind of take my time with shooting him. Just like so. And fall down like that. Grab onto the ledge. The way I did it was very risky. Now, if you get caught by his arm, uh, it'll actually fling you all the way across the screen with this really long, drawn-out animation. And I completely screwed that up. And it's it's okay. It's Snake Eyes. It's not the end of the world. Completely screwed that up. But yeah, the goal is to basically just fall down, grab onto the ledge like this, just rinse and repeat, and then the boss dies. But what I'm going to do here is just pummel him with, with Gridiron. Not Gridiron, but Rock and Roll. I've got tons of ammo. And I don't even really care about taking hits at this point. So fall down. I do care about taking hits there though, because you'll take multiple hits, not just one. So wait. Okay, then jump. Now these bullets will actually go wherever you are on screen. Which is why it's nice to just take your time with someone like Snake Eyes. Um, because for one, he doesn't lose ammo. Um, and here we go, he's gonna fling me all the way across the screen. And I can't do anything about this, I can't mash out of it. There we go, just like that. It doesn't do a lot of damage though, interestingly. And there we go. Alright, and just skip through. And, uh, so Snake Eyes is actually dead for the rest of the level. Or the rest of the mission, so we're just gonna go ahead and I guess use uh, rock and roll here because he cuts through these birds very easily. But I'm gonna switch back over to Gridiron to get his weapons leveled up. And there's actually a block we can break through right here. We're gonna get ourselves a vehicle, and we're gonna try to take that vehicle through to the end of this level. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep using Gridiron because again, rock and roll is maxed out. Not really worry about him. So if you walk all the way to the right, you actually can't get the vehicle down. What you have to do is actually press down and A to drop through the platform, just like so. And this thing jumps super high, so, you know, you want to do some baby taps with your jump button here. I will take that ammunition, though. Just kind of mosey our way along, very slowly. And thankfully, this thing's projectiles can uh, go through walls. Now, if you look there to the right, there's an endless pit. Which means we want to fall down and then hold to the right. Just like so. And come on all the way up. And actually, I should have switched over to... No, I was going to say switch over to Rock and Roll. Uh, to get his health back. But he only had taken one hit. Now, unfortunately, these flame turrets up here, they cannot be destroyed as far as I'm aware. I've tried and tried, and they just will not go down. We're going to go ahead and just wait, and then get the shield, and then keep moving like this. And again, just hold to the right, and then jump. Hold to the right, and then jump all the way up. So many power-ups on this level. And we have to be careful here, because one more hit, and this thing is destroyed. Let's go ahead and come on up here, like so. That uh, sword guy actually pretty much won't hit you if you're up on the, the highest floor. Let's go ahead and switch back over to Rock and Roll. Gonna use his, uh, his guns here. You notice that this hole gets thrown all the way across the screen. When it gets thrown across the screen, you need to jump over it and then wait for it to come back and then jump again. Um, when the hole is out, the boss actually cannot be damaged, which is why you saw the boss not blinking when I... Um, we're going to actually use Duke here, and uh, we're going to use Rock and Roll as well. Um, yeah, so the boss can't be damaged when the hole is out. So we're going to continue upgrading Duke. And I'm going to switch over to his guns. We've actually got uh, plenty of ammunition, so I'm going to go ahead and just use use my ammo here. Get some health back. Now, this is not the first time I've tried uh, beating this game in a Let's Play. I've tried doing this recording for the last three hours now, as of, uh, as of this recording. 
Uh, and I've had all sorts of issues trying to get a good, solid playthrough down. Uh, the last issue is the game soft-locked on me uh, at this upcoming boss. Not this upcoming boss, but the boss of the whole mission. Um, and, uh, so let's cross your fingers for me, that does not happen. Uh, <laughs> please cross your fingers for me. <laughs> so, it's the first time I've ever had a soft lock in this game, but it happened. Basically, I destroyed the boss, and the game did not progress. It's like the boss basically froze in place. Uh, didn't get flown, didn't, didn't get, you know, didn't go off the screen or anything. Didn't disappear like he's supposed to. Uh, and then the game just locked up. I even let time run out, and the game still locked up. But for this upcoming boss right here, what I want to do is just try to point blank it with my vertical shots. Kind of like so. And that was bad. I jumped right into him, and I'm going to probably end up losing my vehicle. Nope, we still got it. Good. And if I hit down and select... Oh, I can't hit down and select right there. I'm going to try to get out of my vehicle. But yeah, this is our next detonator mission. So what I'm going to do is actually... I've got a very specific route in mind here, so I'm going to do the top areas first. And this is what speedrunners actually do. Um, sometimes speedrunners have the best, quickest strats, and uh, it's really good uh, advice if you're trying to learn a game like this. So, um, but yeah, come on up here for this first detonator. And then we're gonna fall right back down. I tried shooting downwards because, you know, enemies just respawn all the time. Uh, but I kind of failed with that. But as far as upgrades are concerned, pretty much everyone is maxed out at the moment, so it doesn't really matter who I give the upgrades to unless its health extends. Um, but I think most of my characters are actually capped out as, as far as health's concerned right now. So, uh... Would have been beneficial to pick Snake Eyes here, but one of the reasons I didn't pick Snake Eyes was because of the soft lock on my previous attempted run. And I was play playing as Captain Gridiron, and so what I'm going to do is try to beat this boss with Duke. Which is what I usually do, as I usually beat this boss with Duke, but I'm going to... Try to switch characters just in hopes that it doesn't soft lock again. So we're going to go ahead and just fall right back down. And again. And we're just going to keep moving. We keep moving, and we don't get hit by these flames. If you try to come up vertically, you're going to take so much damage, which is usually the way I would do it. I would usually come up vertically, because I'm like, well, I'm already down on the bottom, let me go vertically. Uh, there is a vehicle you can get down here, by the way, so I would take the vehicle up and just get... I would just absorb so many hits, uh, and that would be bad, so... So, yeah. Watching the speedrun video actually really helps me out on that one, um, to make it a much cleaner... Uh, much cleaner run. So let's go ahead and just come on up here. I don't really care about any of these enemies. And I don't really care about any of these upgrades either. Because... Uh, all of my characters are pretty much good. So I'm not really too worried about it. Which actually speeds things up, and that's nice. So, you know, you can definitely speed this game up quite a bit if you only focus on upgrading a handful of characters. What I used to do when I started playing this game is try to upgrade everybody and get everybody upgraded evenly. Um, and that's not a bad strategy. It's not a bad strategy. Um, but it does take a lot longer. It's, it's, a, you know, it's gonna be a much longer playthrough if you do that. You'll notice that I can shoot through some platforms but not others. So in this level, it's these striped platforms. And I have to actually pick, uh, pick a different character because uh, Rock and Roll can't jump that high. And we're gonna come on. Actually, we have to jump up from down below. This is actually kind of tricky. So we grab onto this part right here and then come on up for our last detonator. And um, gonna take Duke all the way to the top here. Since we're gonna use him on the boss fight. Got a little bit of ammo. Now these guys, they just mosey back and forth. They only turn around if they bump into a wall or hit the edge of a platform. So they're tricky at first when you first uh, when you first play the game, but when you take things slow, you realize they're actually not that bad to deal with. So here we go. This is where I ended up soft locking the game, and what I want to do is just wait for his rock. Ooh, that's that's a really bad start actually. So the rocks will come all the way down to the bottom of the screen, and we're gonna go ahead and have to absorb another hit here. But ideally, you want to jump down, wait for the rock, jump up, shoot a few times. Jump down, jump up, shoot a few times. 
Jump down, jump up, shoot a few times. Hope that the hitboxes are in your favor. There we go. We got him. Yes, it did not soft lock, so we're in business, guys. And we're actually five minutes faster. Five minutes faster than it was in my last playthrough, so. Alright, so this level is really, really tedious and annoying if you want to try to get all the power-ups and stuff like that. So we're not. We're going to grab our heli here and then just fly up as fast as we can. It is extremely difficult to actually get through this while grabbing all your power-ups. You've got these white guys and uh, the, the, the white suit guys that shoot homing missiles one after another. And it's just very, very difficult to get through unscathed. So we're just going to skip everything. Alright, so for this guy right here, we're going to use rock and roll and just get close and just kind of tank. He will jump up and he will shoot. And he is very random in his, uh, in, in what he does in terms of jumping up or jumping down. Uh, the big thing on that fight is you need to watch out for those laser beams that go across the screen. You'll notice that they'll sort of glow and open up. And then that's, uh, how you can tell which laser is going to, sh to fire out. So we're going to, uh, use Duke again. And we are going to use, uh, we're going to use Snake Eyes because I'm probably going to need him on the detonator level to conserve ammo. And I probably should have picked Gridiron, but we're going to stick with Snake Eyes. Again, almost everyone's maxed out except for Snake Eyes, so I'm going to just use his projectiles all day long on this level. Not the most powerful thing at the moment, but it will definitely be a little bit more powerful when I get uh, his weapon upgraded. Now there's going to be a flying craft coming overhead, so I'm going to switch over and just use my grenades really quickly like this. Let's see. Grenades are actually really solid. There we go. And it's gone. It is done. I'm just going to take my time. Now, one of the reasons I don't want to use ammo here is that the boss pretty much requires you to have ammo. I mean, you can get up and punch it. It is not wise at all. It is not wise one bit. There's a gun upgrade right there. Uh, so I want to make sure I get to the boss with as much ammo as I can. I, I've run out of ammo on this boss before, and it is not fun. Not fun at all. So there we go. We just got some ammo, speaking of which. And so this is a good time to actually switch over. And it's also a good reason to have snake eyes, is so you can actually keep your distance even if you do run out of ammo. We're going to go ahead and use rock and roll here. Because again, rock and roll is super powerful. Look at his spread shot. It's a ridiculously large spread shot. In a good way. It's a good kind of ridiculous. Staying somewhat close just to, you know, in hopes that more projectiles actually collide. And there we go. Okay, so detonator mission again. Look at this. Seven detonators. So we're gonna switch back over to Snake Eyes and just use him for pretty much all of this. And this is a detonator level. I don't have a great grasp on in terms of its layout. And I just completely fell down below. Uh, but we can get ourselves a heli. So what I'm gonna do is fall back down here. And uh, we can actually get the heli coming down from below like so. So there's our first detonator. Six more to go. I don't know why they felt the need to tack on two extra detonators after, uh, you know, detonator level two, but they did. Um, so, yeah. So, just gonna, um, you know, kind of take our time here. It's kind of the name of the game at this point. Just take your, take your time. And I can't go through there. Lots of sort of illusory walls on this level that you can walk through. It's going to be kind of hard to fit through this without getting hit. Another detonator right there. 739 seconds on the clock. That's how much time they give you. They give you a lot of time, but because they give you a lot of time doesn't mean it's fun. Doesn't mean it's fun. Some people might find these types of levels fun. Uh, myself personally, not a big fan. Again, if it's small and uh, the areas are more distinct looking, 
uh, which makes it easier to remember, I don't mind that much. But uh, when it comes to really large ones like this uh, and the next one, hmm, they can die in a fire. But that's okay. Let's keep working our way through it. We have to work our way through it if we're going to see it to you know through to the end of the game. It's just just how it goes. And that's it. I have to actually loop back around. No, no way to cut through these areas. Oops, took another hit. And we're gonna end up loot. Yeah, we just lost it. That was my fault. Uh, it, was, it was sloppy, but eh, it's okay. One more weapon upgrade. We'll have ourselves a five-way shot with Snake Eyes. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this guy. Oops. Not as slick there. Slick there. <clears throat> One of the issues with trying to switch weapons really quick on the fly is you gotta reach over and hit the select button. Which is easier said than done when you're in the middle of trying to dodge things. So again, these guys will not turn around uh, unless they hit the edge of a platform or a wall. And we can jump through here, and now he's maxed out. So now we've actually got a projectile with Snake Eyes that's actually decent. Everyone else is maxed out. So this actually loops back around to where we originally fell down earlier, but I'm gonna actually come up this way. Because I'm pretty sure there's probably a detonator up here that we have to hit. That knockback actually damage boosted me uh, up onto that platform, which is convenient. Okay, there we go. Another detonator right there. Or another check mark to place a detonator. All right. Colored ammunition. Again, that gives us about 30 bullets from what it seems like. So, very nice. And I don't think Snake Eyes can cut through the wall. Yeah, his sword's not that long. We can actually jump through here. And health extend, which is actually good. Snake Eyes does need that. I haven't been giving him many uh, health extends. So we're just going to wait for this guy to shoot. And then use our projectile like that. We can wait for that guy to shoot, too. So, this is actually the exit right here, but we can actually come through this. fall down like so. Another detonator. So four out of seven with 588 seconds on the clock. So we need three more. And we got some upgrades right here. And we can't go through that. Now we're going to have to work our way back up. Because I actually wasn't intending on falling down uh, so early, but I, I did, unfortunately. Okay, come back this way. Another detonator up there. And another one down here. Ooh, almost got hit by that. Alright, two more to go. Let me come back up to the top, because I know there's one there, and then we'll come back down. Alright, there it is. One more. You can eventually memorize these levels. Uh, it's just, it's tough to memorize these later ones, because again, they look very samey as you go through them. Very, very samey. And I can get through that. There we go. You can see why using Snake Eyes is really good, though, because, you know, um, I'm not wasting any ammo, and I'm just gaining bullets as we go. Oh, I still took a hit. I didn't even get hit by it, man. Those are those hitboxes I was talking about. They are huge in this game. Huge, huge, huge. I kind of wish I had kept that other health. I picked it up even though I had full health already. But enemies can do some serious damage in this game. Multiple blocks of health. And uh, there's our last one right there with the vehicle. And we can actually try to do use that to get through the rest of the level uh, much easier. So I'll just fall down. Uh, let's come back up this way. And just 
cut our way back through here, use the ceiling, jump up, come on through here, and uh, this thing is so awkward to use, but there we go, boss fight. Alright, this is a tough one, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna actually use Duke right here. Uh, I wanna actually sort of cut my way through this. Up like this, and then sort of work my way back around. As these blocks scroll off the screen, uh, you can no longer you can no longer fall on the floor uh, underneath them. So what I wanna do is uh, get up here. I'm I'm just gonna punch this guy. I'm just going to punch this guy. Normally what I would do is just use projectiles. Uh, there is a pattern to it, but... But yeah. Alright, so this is a tricky level right here. So what I want to do is kill all these guys. Actually, let me switch over to Snake Eyes. Because, again, not waste ammo. And it's a gun upgrade that I don't need, so I'm just not going to worry about it. We're gonna take the top route here. There's usually a top and a bottom route. And we gotta watch out for these guys' projectiles because if I took a hit there, I probably would have gotten hit into the pit. Uh, what I will do is come down here though and switch up to Duke. Grab that uh, firepower. Uh, and, well, not really firepower, but the weapon upgrade and the health refresh. <clears throat> Try to kill these guys from a distance, wait for him to shoot. Oops, took a hit. Jump. Alright, so this, you know, this uh, pink guy down here, or red guy, uh, what you can do is actually come on up here, and he'll sort of respawn to the right. That's what I want. Otherwise, he's going to hit you when you try to land on that platform, and uh, you are going to get knocked into the pit, and you will die. Taking my time at this point. Just wait, fall down, and wait for this guy. Just wait, and then jump. Just like that. Okay, good. Not too bad. Just gotta take your time on this part. I've died on this level so many times. It's Ninja Gaiden Syndrome. Except worse, I think. Although I'm a little biased because I've played Ninja Gaiden so many times over the years. <laughs> Alright, so you can either take the top route or the bottom route coming up here. Doesn't really matter. Why did you not latch onto that? Uh, Snake Eye should have latched onto that, but he didn't. We have to do that all over again. So I was trying to get slick there and just fall onto one of the ri uh, ridges so I could just latch onto it, but it didn't allow me to. And now we don't have snake eyes anymore, so that was kind of a waste. Uh, everyone's got full health though, so I don't need to go down there. Alright, jump over that. But what sucks about this now is now I have to use my projectiles. So now I have to waste ammo. Yes, I can try to punch. Punching is extremely risky on this level. So you'll notice that that guy respawned more towards the right. Alright, we're just gonna wait. Try to take it easy. Jump over that. Remember, they loop around. I made that mistake once earlier in the playthrough. Gotta learn from your mistakes in these games. If you don't, uh, the games can be much more frustrating than they need to be. This game's already frustrating enough as is. So we're gonna go ahead and take the bottom route here. Oh. So this one you can go top or bottom, doesn't matter. What we're gonna do is actually stick with Duke here. Uh, I'd like to do uh, Rock and Roll, but Rock and Roll doesn't jump very high, and I need a character that can jump pretty well here. So we're gonna start with Rock and Roll, because I forgot this was a two-phase boss fight. So he falls down to the, the bottom of the screen, and then does a spread shot. 
Oh, the spread shot's really difficult to avoid unless you're uh, far away from him. So now we're going to go ahead and switch over to Duke because Duke's just got great jumping uh, capabilities compared to Rock and Roll. So what I like to do is just jump over his projectiles, which is easier said than done. This is can, this can be a very frustrating boss fight. Because one hit and you can be knocked down into the pit and then that's it. And that's it. Good stuff. So we're done with that level. And uh, we're getting very, very close to the end of the game now. Go ahead and skip through that. So now we have uh, General Hawk. Uh, who can actually fly at all times, which is really cool, but he's he's at the first level of, uh, of his weapons. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pick Snake Eyes again for his unlimited firepower, and we're going to pick Rock and Roll. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to pick Rock and Roll. I'm going to pick Duke because he's got a much, much bigger health bar, which will help me out a lot. We don't need Rock and Roll for the final boss. We need uh, Hawk for the final boss. Uh, to make the final boss much easier. So we're going to actually switch off of Hawk, switch back to Snake Eyes, and come on down here first for our first detonator. There we go. Detonator 1. Seven more to go. 887 seconds on the clock. Back over to Snake Eyes. And uh, what I'm going to do here is actually just kind of try to skip a lot of these enemies. A lot of these guys are a major pain. And um, so that is what I'm going to do here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to roll back around because I think there's actually a detonator up here I wasn't really thinking of. And those homie missiles, very tricky to deal with. So let's just try to despawn those guys. Ah, oh, come on, Snake Eyes. Alright, let's switch back over to Duke. Switch to our guns. Oh, I'm just getting all discombobulated here. So it actually looks like I can fly up there. So let's get those gun upgrades with Hawk. And now I think uh, there, there are a bunch of hidden areas in this. Like, this platform I can actually just fall right through. Uh, you're not going to find these things out on your first playthrough. Uh, but again, as you can see, Hawk can just permanently fly, which is quite nice. But again, Snake Eyes for destroying blocks and things like that. Uh, let's see... So I think I can actually drop down below here. Just like that, and we're gonna go ahead and switch back to Hawk. It's all about getting Hawk upgraded now. Uh, if we don't get Hawk upgraded, things can be uh, very much a pain. So this over here takes us to the exit. So I'm just going to show off the exit real quick. So there it is. So you've got to loop all the way back around. And there's nothing here as far as secrets are concerned. Back over to Snake Eyes just to have unlimited ammo. Really want to save my ammo for the boss fight. And just look at how much of a pain this level can be. So many projectiles. And this is where you probably just want to use Hawk. But the thing is, Hawk is so weak, and I have to I have to use my ammo. But we do have ourselves this little guy right here. But not that useful because I can't get these power-ups if I have it. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sacrifice it. Take one for the team. Alright, gonna come down this way. Try to just dodge these missiles. And look at that, that didn't even hit me, and because the hitboxes are so big, I still took damage. And you can see that Hawk is actually taking a lot of damage already, so we're going to switch back over to Duke. There will be some health refill opportunities later on, but you can see how not only can this level be really tedious, but it can also be very frustrating and, and tough, because how many enemies there are, how many projectiles you've got. Alright, back over to, uh, back over to him. He's at 3B, he's almost maxed out, which is actually good. Uh, once he's maxed out, I'll start giving Snake Eyes the power-ups. Snake Eyes needs health, badly. 
Snake Eyes needs food badly. Alright, back to Duke, because I don't want to take too much damage with Hawk. And the homie missiles again, they just really screw up your run. Let's come on over here. And I cannot go through that, but I can come down here. Nope, I can't come down there. Oh, jeez. I hate this level with a passion. When I got here for the first time, I was cursing up a storm. And I've cursed up a storm every other time I've played it. It's, uh, it's a terrible level. I, I hate it. Hate it with a passion. And I meant to actually give that to, uh, Hawk. I wasn't able to, but I can switch back to Hawk right here. It is a very, very frustrating level. So you'll see that this actually looped around. So what I'm gonna do is actually... Well, I was gonna say fall down and then... I probably should actually fall down because uh, I don't want those homing missile guys to show up again. Although I might be able to get this. Let's see. There we go. This will actually help out quite a bit. Because it shoots through walls, which is great. And it's long range. I'm just gonna keep jumping and attacking like so. Now the last boss is actually pretty cool, uh, but the strategy I'm going to use, assuming we actually get to use it, is, uh, you know, it's a pretty easy strategy. So anyone, you know, starting to learn this game for the first time, uh, shouldn't have too much trouble with the final boss. So come on down here. Okay, I'm going to actually switch over to Snake Eyes to get his health back. There we go. And it wasn't- oh, those- actually, the glowing, uh, health pickups actually don't give us all of our health back. I didn't- did not realize that, actually. So, very interesting. I just learned something. There's a shield over here. And I believe that's a health extent, so I'm gonna give that to Hawk. And he got a bunch of his health back as well. So, we actually switch back over to Snake Eyes. We do need to get his weapons upgraded. That way, when I switch back to him, um, it's not too much of a problem. Alright, there we go. Four out of eight, four more to go. So we're just gonna keep working our way back over here. Nice shield up there. I can actually go ahead and grab that. That'll actually help out quite a bit too. Boom, got the shield. And actually, I need to drop back down. Oh, I, you can't scroll the screen down, which really sucks in this. No, I don't. What I highly recommend you do when you play this game is download a map uh, of this last level and just refer to it as you play. Otherwise, you're just going to be running around in circles endlessly. Endlessly running around in circles, and it can be just extremely aggravating. I actually have a map up for this one. I don't like doing this for my Let's Plays, but if I don't, then I'm just going to be wandering around this level for all eternity. And it's not going to be fun for you to watch, and it's not going to be fun for me to play. Um, so let's go ahead and come on up to the right here. And we can go ahead and cut through here. Alright, we can't get through that. Um, let's go ahead and do that detonator up there. I see it, and Snake Eyes does need that health. So I'm going to go ahead and use that health pickup. And we're going to switch over to Snake Eyes. And... I want to keep using Snake Eyes, but I didn't upgrade his weapons properly, so he's still at level 3. When, preferably, he would be maxed out by this point. More ammunition? So, you know, we are getting ammo back, at least, which is nice. And I'm just going to skip through these guys, because I was, I've got my shield, or my armor. All 
right, and uh, this is a gun pickup right here, so we can go ahead and get our gun closer to being upgraded. I hate those grenades, man. They do a lot of damage. And a lot of times, guys that shoot projectiles like that, they will be shooting the projectiles before you even push the screen over. It's quite annoying. There should be a detonator over here to the left. And actually, this might be uh, the last of it. Which I would be grateful for. Because you guys already know how I feel about this stage. But I'm just going to wait for these guys to move over. That way I can get behind them. Just like that. And now we're going to take the uh, top route. And our last detonator should actually be over here. So it actually didn't go as badly as I thought. Uh, it started off very poorly, but hey, this level can just go downhill extremely quickly because of the amount of enemy enemies that are available. Or uh, I'm so tired right now. I'm just stuttering and, and like slurring my speech and stuff because I've been here working at this playthrough for four hours now, trying to get a, a, a let's play recorded. And I think we can actually go through one of these. And I am just burnt out. This game has really taken it out of me in multiple, more ways than one. Uh, and if you decide to try to learn this game, uh, you need to have you need to have significant patience. If you don't, you're you're not going to enjoy the playthrough very much. Um, I understand why uh, this game has a lot of fans. I mean, I'm sure a lot of kids grew up with this game, and there's a lot of nostalgia attached. And you, you can't you can't argue with that. But uh, the game can be very very frustrating. Uh, and, uh, I'm just, I'm just worn out with this game. I'm, I'm gonna be glad to have, be able to put this one behind me, basically. Especially after today's session. My Shatterhand playthrough from last week, I nailed on my first try. So it took me about 40 minutes to record it, and then I was done. But this one took me four hours to get a half-decent playthrough that didn't crash on me. Uh, it was very frustrating, so... Just for anyone curious uh, about the sort of behind the scenes in these Let's Plays. And it took me a lot longer to learn the game. I've been playing this game for a couple of months now. Uh, on and off. Not like religiously or anything. Because I, I never really enjoyed uh, any of my playthroughs. Never really fully enjoyed them. Um, and so... I, I was one of those playthroughs where I always like was hesitant to go back to it. It's like, ugh, do I really have to do this one. But, you know... I still did it. <laughs> so uh, basically what I'm doing here is just working my, my way back up so we can try to get to the, the final boss. So we have to come all the way up to the top. And that's not where I need to be. I need to come to the right here. And this is where I need to be. So this boss has a lot of things going on, but I'm going to try to just hover in his face like this. Just tap the A button like so. And then uh, hit him with my spread shot. Look at how big that shot is. Very satisfying. I wish you could play as General Hawk on other levels. But here we go. If you get hit by that beam, you'll actually turn into a little animal. animal. And the, the floor down below actually uh, constantly scrolls. If you hit the beams, you take damage. If you fall into the pits, you die instantly. Just like, you know, any other part in the game where that happens. That was scary. So there's still knockback with Hawk even when he's in the air. And there we go. You see how it turned me into an animal? But that's it. We just beat G.I. Joe. A real American hero. Not really. On NES. What a game. I am glad this one is over with. I've been trying my damnedest to get a recording down for the last several hours. And I'm glad we finally did. So, But yeah, this is... It's a game. <laughs> Naxat games or Taxian games as they're sorry Taxian games or Naxat games as, as they're known in, as in Japan have a tendency of being fairly difficult um, G.I. Joe I think is one of the more challenging that they, that I've played by them um, I've beaten Loji man. I've even done multiple loops on Loji man. I've beaten Burei fighter um was Kick, Kickmaster them? I think Kickmaster was them. I've gotten pretty far in Kickmaster without too much trouble. Well, man, G.I. Joe is just a major pain in the ass. Which is kind of crazy, because, like, I always really wanted to play this game growing up. And, like, it looked great. And as I've dabbled with the first couple levels, you know, over the years, it seemed fine. But 
when I really buckled down to to do this playthrough, you know, learn this game for you guys, because I had several people out there that wanted to see this, um, it was way more of a pain in the ass than I had anticipated. There are lots of boss fights with so many different boss patterns, so much to learn in that regard. Uh, and you've got different character types uh, with, you know, different tropes that you have to work with. You got to figure out, you know, what characters work best. That takes time. Uh, and then you got to figure out the detonator levels. Uh, don't even get me started on those last couple, the last one in particular. Um, uh, it was it was a very frustrating learning experience. Maybe I'll come back to this game in the future, just you know, casually, just for fun. Maybe, probably not anytime soon. Uh, but it was it was a very frustrating playthrough to learn. So if you decide to try to learn this game, just be warned. Uh, it is a very challenging game. Sometimes for the wrong reasons, uh, and it is a lot to learn. Uh, you're gonna have to have a lot of time in your hands to get through it consistently. Maybe not a lot of time in your hands to beat the game, because uh, you can tank a lot of these bosses and just point blank them and just play really, really sloppy. But if you want to, you know, do a playthrough where you get through it consistently, preferably without continuing, um, without having to continue a lot anyway, um, and that's gonna take work. It takes a lot of work to get a relatively smooth run down on this game. And that's not even accounting for loop two. There is a second loop in this game, which as the credits roll out here, you guys will see that it'll give us a password at the very end. And we can enter that password in to start loop two. And actually the game will just throw you right into loop two. Um, but uh, if you don't want to do loop two right away, uh, you can just use the password later on. So. Yeah, very frustrating experience for me, but I'm glad I finally got this one knocked out. I am glad I had the experience with the game. I just wish it was a, a more positive experience overall, because I hate coming out of these playthroughs being negative and... Uh, because it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make the viewer feel good, and it doesn't make me feel good either. I want to beat these games, learn them, and feel good about it. I'd be like, oh, that was a, that was a good... I, I enjoyed doing that, you know? Like, when I finally beat Battletoads, I really enjoyed doing that. Frustrating, yes, but I felt like I accomplished something, whereas with G.I. Joe, I didn't feel like I accomplished anything. Um, so, yeah, if you decide to go into it as a new player, just be warned. It is going to require some work uh, if you want a good, smooth playthrough. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's going to require some work. So if I hit start here, uh, it's actually going to throw us right to the second quest, as they call it. I'm just going to call it loop two. Loop number two. And it just throws you basically right in, so... But yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for me, guys. I don't have anything else here. I am not doing a Loop 2 playthrough. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Someone else can do it for me. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Despite my whining, I hope you guys still enjoyed this playthrough. For those of you guys new to the game, or, or just, eh, moderately familiar with it, hopefully you guys learned something in the playthrough. And, uh, hopefully, you know, maybe you learned some tricks that you can apply to your own journey with this game and uh you know if you do decide to try to tackle this game i hope your journey is a lot smoother than mine was so but yeah nothing else to say guys uh if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel subscribe i've got many let's plays here and uh plenty more to come uh and for everyone else already sub thank you for your continued support uh thanks to all my patreon backers and youtube channel members as well and um yeah that's it guys uh, until the next one take it easy